Hey guys, welcome back. So this is uh, one of the newest acquisitions. So what we're doing today is we are now within our seven day inspection period. So we're gonna go through and inspect the property. I went through with inspectors already and basically most of the stuff on the house is in, in good condition. One thing is that there's some fraying on the wire that's coming in uh, from the electric company and that actually would be covered by the electric company since it's before the meter. We're gonna have the homeowner call them now, get it done before we even take possession of the property. So it's one less thing on our list. So let's go inside. But before we go inside, I wanna show you something that's really cool. For you guys that are not in, from Florida, this is called Terrazzo. And Terrazzo is a very expensive um, subfloor, but it's actually the main floor at the same time. And to put in Terrazzo today costs more than it would, it would cost you to put in marble. What's normal is that it would stay to just the inside of the house, but they actually spent the extra money and put Terrazzo on the front porch. So at one point in time, this was a nicer place to live, basically. So this is awesome. It looks really great. I like it. And when it's polished and done right, just like when you redo marble, it can really pop and uh, have a great look. So let's go check out the inside from this 19, what is it? 50. 50? Yeah. My name's Kyle Jatan. Uh, I'm Bascal's agent, helping him with the purchase of this property. Hopefully, God willing, he'll get us a lot more great deals. <laughs> So this here, if you don't know what this is, this is Jocelyn Windows. This is probably around like 20s to 50s. And then these are also Jocelyn Windows, but these are more like 85. So these were updated, but still not that energy efficient. We need to step it up to the next level. So from here, it went to single pane windows, then double pane windows, and now we have hurricane energy efficient windows. So that's kind of like the history of windows. So this place is a one bedroom, but it's really awesome because it's, it's a huge one bedroom high ceilings, and in the era from the 50s to 70s, they had this trend where they went from eight foot ceilings down to seven and a half foot ceilings, but these are the eight foot ceilings that we're like accustomed to. You would not think a half a foot's a lot, but if you see a seven and a half foot house, it's a lot. You can, it's a big difference. So, but right now we're in the living room space. It's awesome, it's very well decorated, it's beautiful. Once we polish this terrazzo, it's gonna, this the red and the orange and the little stones are gonna pop and shine. And then the whites are gonna be whiter, the grays are gonna be more gray. It's gonna be a little, it's gonna be more vibrant. And like you were saying, they don't even do this anymore because it really is so expensive It's, ex it, it's extremely expensive. It is more expensive to do this than to put down marble. And the guy that I get actually does not put wax down. Some people will put wax over it, we don't. We just do a peroxide on it, 40% uh, medical grade peroxide, it brightens it up, it kills all the germs, and then he goes through grit after grit after grit to polish it, so it has a natural shine. It looks like it will be slippery, but it isn't actually slippery. So it's, it's just great, and people love the vibe when they wanna have a 1920s, 50s, 80 vibe. You can de decorate it a specific way and you'll have it. You'll have that really great Florida feel. So here's the kitchen. And this is actually a really big space. Now, I like how big the space is, but to make it feel even bigger, what we're gonna do eventually is we're gonna knock down this wall and make this an island. And then over here, in between the living room and the kitchen, we're gonna put the sink there. This way the sink, uh, while someone's doing the dishes, they can communicate, people can hang out on the bar. We will then move the stove where the sink is and possibly, probably leave the fridge where it's at right now. That little change where you flip the stove and the sink, the locations, will make a significant difference. And because we're opening this up, we can even extend the island even further and put a washer and dryer. It won't feel congested since you have an open layout. But if we brought it over now, it would feel way too tight. So once you open the walls up, you definitely have a lot more room. When you open the ceilings up, you have a lot more room to be in a tighter space, but it feels airy because you're giving them height, you're giving them that open feel. Feel free to check out the bathroom. It's really great. I don't think I'm really gonna do much in there at all for this unit, so just check it out. It matches the coastal cottage vibe. For sure.
Oh yeah, it does. You don't. You honestly don't need to. Everything. I mean, you're gonna update the shower heads to all the. You know what? Let me get, give me the camera. Let me get the camera. <laughs> Oh, I can't really open this. Are you going to be updating the windows? Uh, hurricane just... windows that are energy efficient, so I won't need shutters. Got it. Hurricane windows that are going to be energy efficient. And as you can see, this is already in the same color scheme as the Coastal Cottage's vibe. The only thing I believe that's going to want to update are the fixtures. That's match right. The magnetic shower head that is known on all of this property. So it makes us women easy to wash our hair or even shave our legs because we want to go to the beach and spin spam minute, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Also, the other reason why is because when I upgrade it, this component here can uh, go bad on a ch cheaper shower um, uh, handle. So we actually upgrade it so later it doesn't cause us a problem. When we're at a property, we do everything we can to upgrade so we don't have a problem later. So we might upgrade that as well and the toilet so we can install the components that we know are not gonna be a problem. So this is the bedroom. And for a downtown property, this is a very large bedroom. You know, has a lot of space, has a great vibe. You can see the person naturally gave it that coastal cottage feel. And all of these oranges and these colors are blending in with the terrazzo. Terrazzo comes in many colors. You can have oranges, greens, blacks, blues, purples, uh, some of them, the darker ones, I'm not too attracted to, but this orange red is just so good. There isn't enough money you can spend to really do it that you could justify. So that's why when you're getting something like this, it's worth spending the money up front because it's hard to replicate this type of natural vibe that it's gonna give that's unseen. Like adding value to the room that is not so noticeable. Right? It's just feeling, you know what? Orangey. I don't know. Like you feel this like energy. It makes sense. And it just it gives you this energy. Yeah. This really like not too strong. Not this like, oh man, it's like hurts type of energy, like too loud, or it's this like very subtle. Hey, you're in a good space. You're happy, you got energy, you should go out for a walk. You know I wanna be healthy. I'm gonna have some celery. Big closets too, right? Like everything you need. Well, right now the doors don't need to be upgraded, but once the time comes, I'll upgrade the doors and the shelving system here. I don't like that the, the AC unit is right here, but oh. it is, it's fine oh, that I it's see. here. Uh, and the only other thing I would change is I would have the washer and dryer in the unit. So I would make that adjustment as well. Would you keep this garage? I would want to convert this also into a bedroom. If I could, one bed, one bath, just small. I would get rid of the storage space and I would also try to push the building back all the way to the end matching the other building. I have it all matching to the other end and having a decent sized master suite. That's what I would do. That's weird how there's a bedroom window into the... Well, well, because this wasn't enclosed. It was, this was a carport. Yeah, I guess. So. Originally. Yeah, and then they blocked it off. Yeah. Not not oh. the current owners, but prior. Somebody yeah. before them. But yeah, push it back, connect that hallway section, make it like a two bed, one bath, make this a master bedroom. Is what I would want to do. With That's just, usually what I see people convert garages, master bedrooms. Yeah. Yeah, and you can also add another bath because I mean the water is right there. That's what I'm saying. Is I would I would add another bath in the back. Yeah. Or the side. I mean, that should be easy because the laundry and uh, bathroom are right there, so you have all your water and sewer right there. Yeah. Maximize my doors. Maximize the number of beds because uh, that just pays a lot more. Right. Yeah. And um, based off of rents. Uh, the cost of construction is actually, even though it's very high, it's not that high compared to how much rents are. Rents are very high right now, so. So here's a real estate game. People would buy a massive amount of land, but did not want to pay a massive amount of tax. How do you get around that? You have a farm, and your farm could be an orange farm. So now you have a bunch of orange trees on your land, and you have 20 acres. Well, you don't have to pay tax for 20 acres because you're a farm, and farms get reduced property taxes. So a person would have this massive house on these 20 acres and they have a very small tax bill. At one point in time, they decide they don't want 
the farm anymore. They will scrape all the land, they'll sell it to a developer, and they will be able to uh, divide it into communities. And that's how they basically kept their carrying costs low until it was time that they can flip it into a development. The land cost is high, orange returns are low, they're bringing, they're importing oranges from out of the country. It's like, you know, when you're competing with that cost, the government's forcing farmers to sell stuff less than what it costs them to make, and they're also making them throw away stuff, which also doesn't make any sense to me. Why are you gonna pay them yeah. to sell it for cheaper and throw it away, you know? Yeah. It doesn't make, doesn't yeah. make any sense, but um, they're doing it. Yeah. So, let's go outside. Yeah. I like uh, this, this too. So here, we are gonna be able to uh, walk into the garage. But yeah. that does not actually connect to the garage. There's, there's no door. But we can bust it open and then right, you could. Right, right. That's right. one thing that I had said I would do somewhere, especially on the other unit, that there's uh, in the bathroom uh -huh. on the wall where the window is. I would probably take out that window, because that's an older window anyways, and make it a door. So when you pull your car in the garage, you can access just like you're talking about. So one of the things I'm thinking about, but I don't want them to go through the bathroom. That's the part, right? I don't okay. want them to go through the bathroom to do that. So I would like to somehow have it here to the back and then actually make this a bedroom. Yeah. I would like to make the park carport a bedroom. Mm. Enclose it. And now it's a two bedroom. Yeah. One bath. So this is currently a storage space, but if you bust the wall, you'd be in the carport section. So I would like to open that wall up and connect it all together. Oh uh, yeah, that's a good idea. And then enclose this also for the, the space, you know? Yeah, that's my story. Uh, uh, so if you can see, this is a lot of land and the concept is that we would basically double out the land and add two more one bedrooms. And I think based off the land size, they would allow two more one bedrooms. If I try to go for two bedrooms, I don't think they would allow it because there's not enough car parking spaces for it. So um, that's the idea. And that is why I was willing to pay $480,000 for this piece of land in this building. It's decently distanced from the beach, but it is not one to two blocks, which I normally buy. Exactly. This one is, uh, well, how, well, and, and 10, here, minutes from, 10 minutes in downtown? Yeah, and here About you, 10 minutes, uh, yeah. Honeymoon Island, which is like uh, like the locals beach. The, that's it, where the locals the go. It's not commercialized beach that you know everybody hears about, yeah. Clearwater Beach. But Honeymoon Island actually gets rated in the top like beaches nationwide all the time. And you can actually take, uh, uh, take your whole family there and, I mean, almost have a section to yourself sometimes, yeah. which is nice. And then, yeah. Yeah, like you said, you're so close to downtown Dunedin and we have tons of new little restaurants down there, uh, little local breweries left and right down there now. Um, we just had a little Mardi Gras celebration downtown last there. week. Yeah, yeah we did a we did a parade, we did, you know, food vendors out in the street. Dunedin is like such a hot spot in Dun in Pinellas right now. A hundred percent. I mean, you can't go wrong buying in this area. You know, not even Pinellas. I was telling the my viewers that I went to Vegas and yeah. people were talking about Dunedin. I went to Texas, they were talking about Dunedin. And I'm like, how do you know about Dunedin? <laughs> yeah. so like I came to visit and I love it. And then like, same thing with him. He's like, I came to visit, I love it. I want to come back. And it's like, it has that, the best of both worlds where it has the small city vibe and the big city vibe. It has that like nice blend where you can have it all. And if you want to feel like you're in like Key West and no one's around you, you go to Honeymoon Island. You don't, you're not really seeing many people. Like how congested and jam packed Clearwater Beach is, you don't have that at Honeymoon Island. Right. And it's, uh, it's just a chill spot to go, so. And then, then we also have the uh, Pinellas Trail, which runs right through Dunedin and it's 26 miles long. It runs the length of Pinellas County. And I mean, that thing, you know, is great for uh, rollerblading, bicycling, walking, jogging. I mean, we, myself, my daughter and my wife go on it usually once every couple of weeks and we'll, you know, ride down to downtown Dunedin, get something to eat, get some ice cream and ride back. So there's just- Do you go to Lane's Lemonade? 
Yep. Oh yeah. Uh, and uh, we get the uh, avocado toast. Yeah. Uh, yes. So. so Danita was actually rated number one walking retirement community in the country. Clearwater Beach was rated number one natural beach in the country. So we have all these number ones that are like five, 10 minutes away from, from where we are. Uh, cost of living is actually, even though people that live here are like, wow, it's become so expensive. Relatively nationally, we are actually still very affordable for the housing, right? So um, that's the plan with this one. Um, and that's what, I, what I'm excited about it. And uh, God willing, we'll pick up a couple more properties here in the neighborhood to have them uh, adjacent. And this is gonna be not so much of more my Airbnb type of properties. It's gonna be more of my uh, local resident rentals. Uh, so be conscious about what your laws are because this city has very strict laws. And then this section, is it three months? I, I believe it is. Three month minimum. So. Uh, this would be good for my the local people, and this would be also good for like my medical patients and my uh, traveling nurses. But no, nothing shorter than three months. So, see you at the next one.